Good day everybody and welcome to Kampala Road. Today I am talking about my Sharg track cleaner which has arrived. Ordered a couple of months ago I think, but uh, I've only just picked it up in the last few days. Um, those who have suffered my videos in the past will know that track cleaning is a big issue for me. Now what I have been using uh, a long long time ago is this. I jumped on the bandwagon and bought one of these. Um, people have differing opinions. Uh, all I can say is the vacuum cleaner is very, very good, very useful. But uh, for me, the tra abrasive pads and the polishing uh, wasn't particularly um, effective. Now, my track is very old. Um, well, 2002. It's on its fourth layout, basically. Um, and what I've been using is the track rubber, so I'm not too worried about the track rubber being abrasive or uh, taking off the sheen or the nickel silver. I'm not too concerned about that. My track is far gone. <laughs> it works, it works well and I don't mind. But as you can see, the track rubber's come in for a beating. I have to clean every day. The um, oxidization is quite bad in this environment. I'm sure people in warm environments in Australia or elsewhere will understand what I'm talking about. So I ordered the Sharg and that's what we're going to have a look at. So um, having watched uh, Aidy Pullen's track cleaning video, Mix Lakeside Layout, a uh, very comprehensive video on a number of items he uses to clean his track and Graham at Lakeside, again, who uses uh, a number of, a combination of items to clean his layout, including the CMX, um, which both Mick and Graham use. Um, I wasn't prepared to go down the 140 quid route on the CMX, despite how well it was, uh, was made. Also, i a bit concerned about getting stuff from the US to Uganda, so uh, while there is a 100% track record from the UK, I've not really bought anything from the US to here and was afraid of things getting lost. Um, so onwards and upwards, I rang Sharg, who advertised in a couple of the magazines and spoke to a chap called George, and while I'm talking I'll unbox this. Um, as I said, I have had a peek, but not used it. Uh, so it's George and Margaret who are up in Scotland. Uh, they don't speak with Scottish accents. And um, had a long chat with George, and then I had a shorter chat with Margaret, who takes your money. <laughs> but um, with George, uh, I've spoken about the CMX openly. Um, there was no real issues that, with that. He said to me that he had been making this product for quite a while, and this is the improved version. Uh, and that he intimated to me that CMX had copied his idea. It is a dark day here. Um, we are well in our wet season and it's very wet. Uh, the good thing about that is it's much cooler, lower humidity and uh, no dust. My railway runs much better without all that junk. I digress. Uh, so what we get is the unit itself um, which appears to be very well made. Uh, double, I believe these are Backman bogies. The only thing I have noticed is this one's a little bit stiff. This is the sprung plate with the pad attached. Uh, anybody with a CMX will uh, immediately be very familiar with all this. Uh, these two screws here are the... Uh, oops, these two screws here are the adjustments uh, for your pad to touch the track. You adjust those under here and I'll show you a bit later. Uh, this is the tank obviously. Uh, the valve for filling or the entrance for filling is there and the instructions are you leave that slightly open to allow a bit of air. Uh, obviously when you pick it up full you then have to tighten that up otherwise everything will flow everywhere. And this is the valve which with the supplied screwdriver uh, to regulate the flow of fluid onto 
pad down here. And apparently we'll be able to see it dripping down. Now, I have seen people demonstrate their CMXs, so I assume it's exactly the same as that. It is looks very well made. Um, it is has got a little bit of weight to it, but they do actually advertise that it's lightweight. So I asked George that question. Why are you advertising it lightweight when the CMX uh, attributes are that it is heavy? And he seemed to think that, or he's told me, and he makes 150 of these a month, or sells 150 a month, that um, it's not about the weight, it's about how strong the spring is on your uh, pad, onto the track, and um, all the weight does is create issues about towing it round or pushing it round the layout. Um, but again, I'll say he intimated to me that CMX had copied this design. Okay, moving on quickly, um, I bought a spare set of pads. These are a type of felt. I did ask him, can I get it elsewhere? He said, no, you have to buy it from me. Uh, so one set comes with the unit and I bought a spare set, but they are washable. You can use them over and over again, the bit that's on there. You get a, what's it? Uh, can't remember the name of it. And you get the needle, which you put on to put the fluid in there. Syringe, isn't it? It's called a syringe, yeah. Uh, this is the company. I've got no affiliation with them. I just thought I'd give it a try. Um, as I said earlier, my problem is track rubbers and uh, hands smashing everything up. So the advice is um, on the instructions here, which are very clear, to use this ISO isopropanol. isopropanol. Excuse me. And anybody watching this in Australia will recognise this. It comes from good old Bunnings. And the advice is a 70 30 mix with distilled water. And a 10 mil goes into the tank. I don't know how that lasts. And now we're going to try it out and see what happens. Okay, the needle is on. Anybody scared of these things? Don't look now. It does look a little bit like a hepatitis needle. They are extremely painful because they're not particularly sharp. Um, so I'm going to unscrew the end here and fill the tank with the fluid. This is the first time I've done this, so if there's any cock-ups you know why. Is this what the nurse? Is this what the nurse feels when she's injecting you? Okay, so that's about nine and a half actually in there. Um, so it says reattach. My hand in the way again. Reattach the brass screw. All CMX users will know what I'm doing, but leave, don't tighten it, leave it so the air can get in. So the vacuum doesn't form, I suppose. There she is, full up, ready to go. I haven't adjusted this, this is tight, so it should not be dripping. One thing I have forgotten, it does say run it round the track first before you start uh, putting the fluid in just to make sure it is touching the uh, rails. So I will do that while that is sealed. We'll move to the layout. Right, the shark is up there on the main line waiting. Um, I have to say I've not cleaned the track at all since I've come back from being away, which was a, I was away for about a month. So I'm hoping for great things from this, although I am a realist. <laughs> So she's connected and we'll bring her back towards the camera. So remembering this is a dry run. Winter changed. See how the 33 gets on. Shouldn't be any problems. Extremely powerful locomotive. A 
Again, the advice to me is it doesn't really matter whether it's pulled or propelled. Uh, apparently, loco wheels get cleaned, etc., etc. George wasn't too fussed. Off she goes. Doesn't seem to be having too many problems. So I'll bring her right round and see what the pad looks like. Okay, she's coming now. Uh, I've gone round while she's been going around just checking the pad is actually touching the track. As, as people who regularly watch my videos know, my track undulates. And that's an understatement. So here we go. So the 33's had no problem pulling that round, even though there's a little bit of friction there. What we might do is just have a look at the pad underneath. It's gone round twice. Uh, and see what colour the pad is. And as I said, there's no fluid on that at the moment. Well, a picture paints a thousand words. That's without any fluid. <laughs> um, I think the 33 did quite well to get round. So let's do an adjustment. What I'm going to do is uh, Currently it's on the upline and the locomotive is pulling and uh, once it's gone round a couple of times on the upline I will then propel on the downline just to see uh, what the performance is like. Right, I've left the screwdriver in the other room so I'm going to use Hornby's trusty accessory decoder screwdriver and see what happens when I open the tank? Right, you can just see some fluid hopefully dripping through there slowly. There's a little bit of skill um, adjusting the nut on the top, plus also the amount of air flow you're allowing from that brass screw on the side here get those two right and I think it's going to take a little bit of practice but there is some fluid now running down quite freely um, and I haven't had to un -tighten that screw up, untighten that screw very much so I think the next thing is to get it moving before it floods the area <laughs> with alcohol I'm sure the uh, crew drivers would like that so let's get underway our first run. Now I'm not going to take running shots of her going round and round, I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll run around a few times and let's have a look at her when she's done that. Take it away, 33. Just while she's gone. Oh yes, the track is wet. The track is clean. Gosh. Fingers crossed. She goes. I don't know if that's too quick or not. Let's just rub the track with these two fingers and see what happens. It's wet and no marks, no black marks on the fingers. Look at that. <sighs> Happy bunny. Right now she's coming and I'm propelling and she's moving from the up to the down over those points in front of that class 20. See if there's any problems. The stiff bogey seems to have eased up a bit. Just excuse the wonky uh, yard light, I've got to sort all that out. So, um, this I ordered the black one. Uh, it comes in white with an SO logo on. There's a yellow, blue and green. The reason I chose black, it sits well, it can sit in a siding, unobtrusive. It's well made. I like it very much. Right, so I just pull it up to a halt here and close off the valves.
Now one thing I have noticed is that the 10 mil of fluid doesn't last very long. That may be... Um, I need to be more careful on the flow rate. There is a little bit of experimentation there. Um, the next thing I've got to do is put it on my branch line and that is mountainous. <laughs> Forget undulations, it's mountains. Um, but I'll do that off camera. So, uh, what do I think of it? Let's have a look at the pads first. Okay, we'll just have a look at the pad. And it's obviously working. I've closed the valve and I've closed the lid so it doesn't, liquid doesn't flow. But that um, shows the results really. The track was dirty. As I said, I chose the black one uh, so it can just sit in the siding. I don't have to move, it looks all right. It looks prototypical of something, an unusual line side vehicle. Um, as I said, it's well made. It's well thought out, it does the job. Um, I'm going to be interested to see how long I can run a train now um, before the first signs of uh, connectivity deterioration start happening. One thing with the Z21 was um, that it doesn't like dirty track and it doesn't like dirty loco wheels. Uh, I've had, since I've had the Z21 I've had to clean the loco wheels on a continuous basis unlike when I had the Elite, which it didn't seem to be too fussy. So what I'm going to do um, is use it for a month without any track rubber assistance. And I want to see what happens. Um, now obviously on sidings, small sidings, in the station area, um, you can use your hand to run it up and down uh, areas that may be difficult for loco to get into or awkward or just down quicker to use your uh, hand to push it up and down. Um, one of the things is nice is now that when you come in on the day and you start up your layout, you can run a train having the track cleaned rather than the first 20 minutes, half an hour using a track rubber. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, other than that, I'm going, as I said, going to test it for a month without the track rubber and I will report back. But, um, as with the CMX, I think it will do a good job. You don't see too many, you hear a lot about the CMX, but you don't hear too much about this, I just wonder why. The only thing I can find to worry about this, and the build quality is very good, are these. It takes quite a bit of force to pull these down to release the felt strip. I hope they're strong enough, and they last. Durability. But other than that, I'm very pleased with it. So, um, thank you, George and Margaret. The unit cost um, £79, uh, up against 130 140 for the CMX. So, I don't know whether it's better, worse, which one's better, which one's more convenient. Maybe this could be better with a screw valve on top, a brass screw valve. Um, but I suggest it's like that to keep the price down. Um, I will report back in a month and let you know whether it's doing the job or not. So, uh, from Kampala Road, cheers for now.